This video here is going to go over the basic concepts of goniometric measurements. So what I think students a lot of times have a difficult time of understanding is that goniometric measurements are simply to see what range of motion is available at the joint. Okay? So we got two different types of range of motion. We have our active and we have passive. And what we're looking for are end feels. So we'll talk about this at each specific joint, but there are four types of end feels. First, and what you're going to see here with knee flexion is soft tissue approximation, so a soft infield. So with that, you think about flexing in the infields. When I push the passive range of motion, why is that stopping? Well, it's stopping because the gastroc and the hamstring are compressing against each other. That's soft tissue approximation. That's your soft infield. That's normal. That's what we should have. The next, the most common, is a firm infield. So if you take like uh, stretching your hamstrings, for example, that's a firm infield. Knee extension will also be a firm infield because you're stretching the posterior capsule. <clears throat> and we want to find those infields for all these measurements. Whatever the normal infield is, we want to find it. Uh, the third infield is hard. And really, you're only going to have that about at the elbow. We have bone on bone. We would never stretch that because it's bone on bone. The fourth infield is the one we definitely don't want to find, and that's empty. So if we find that, we know we need to treat that. An empty infield means, let's say she's flexing her knee, and I'm even, say I'm pushing passively. She says, ow, there's n I don't feel anything stretching. I'm, nothing's approximating. There's no hard infield. Empty means there's pain. So that means we definitely need to treat that. And if for some reason you find a hard infield where there shouldn't be, that means there's bone growth that shouldn't be there, and there's nothing you can do about it. So you need to talk to the doctor. So we're going to do knee flexion first, just to understand the basic concepts. So we need to take active measurements first, then passive. So once you line this up, and once we get to the actual knee and talk about the landmarks, what you're going to have the lateral upper condyle for the axis. Your proximal arm is going to go to the greater trochanter. Distal arm is going to go to the lateral malleolus. Your cue is always to have the patient do it first. All right, so can you flex your knee for me? Now, if this thing moves, that's fine. Just reline it up to the landmarks that you needed. And you get that measurement. That's all she's got. So as you can see here, we have 93 degrees of active knee flexion. So then I'm going to apply pressure, which is the passive. And I was able to get her to 142 degrees of knee flexion. Pass fail on your practicals, you better bring that back. If you just let go, so let's do that again. If you take that measurement and you let go and it just drops down, that's a fail. You got to redo the whole practical. So that's knee flexion, active passive motion. So let's imagine she was stuck with a knee flexion contracture and that's where she started. I line the goni back up. She's stuck here. She's already, as you can see, looking at the goni at 44 degrees. So she has at least 44 degrees of flexion without doing anything. So they get credit even if they have a contracture. Now let's look at knee extension. Some extension measurements are a little different and harder to kind of figure out at first until you understand what we're going for. With knee extension, we're trying to get straight. So if we're trying to get straight, what do we do if they can't get straight? Well, they're going to be lacking motion, lacking degrees. So <clears throat> we're going to line it up in the same landmarks. I'm going to cue her to try to push your knee down into the table. So tighten this muscle, push that knee down as far as you can. So I'm not pushing on anything. And actively on her own, as you can see here, she is one degree of hyperextension. I'm going to apply a little pressure on the distal femur, proximal tibia, and I can get her to a firm infield, which is what we would expect, of five degrees of hyperextension. Now let's imagine she's tight. So have her start here. So she's had a knee replacement. Right now, you can see on this goni that she is lacking 21 degrees of knee extension. So I'm going to have her push down. That's all she's got. She's lacking 20 degrees of active. I'm going to push. Feels kind of stretchy. Now we have lacking 16 degrees of knee flexion. 16, 15 right there. Okay. 
and put her back. <clears throat> and that's how we're going to measure knee flexion. So we'll talk more about that specifically when we get to knee flexion, but that's the basic premise is that we've got to make sure we can read that goni and we're giving them credit for how much motion is at that joint. So again, if she starts here, let's say she starts here on knee extension, she's lacking 42 degrees. She pushes down, we push down. It's still, she's lacking 35 degrees. It's not about how much she went through there. It's about how much is available or not available at that joint. Go and straighten out there. So remember, we're looking for finding the infields on the passive. Active is just whatever the patient can do. Passive is what you do second and just do it right after the active. And we're trying to find the infield, soft, firm, hard, empty. A lot of times I see students just kind of barely move it. Find the infield. And on each practical, I'm gonna ask you, what was the infield? And then you're gonna tell me. And if it was empty, I'll be like, so they had pain? And you'll say, no, I'm like, well, then you didn't push enough. So we need to make sure we're finding the infield, doing active and passive, and making sure that we can read this goniometer correctly, giving them credit for the range of motion that they actually have. 